Hey guys, alright, so this is going to be a quick guide showing you how I actually use my fabric materials within Keyshot. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. Uh, if you've got access to the fabric materials and you've unzipped the folder, obviously this is what you're going to have access to. And I'm going to be using Fabric 10, which is this material that you guys see over here. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, there's a very specific material I'm using, which is the hard shiny plastic. So I'm going to go ahead, drag and drop that onto my object that I'm using over here, which is my material ball. I'm going to double click on that here in the material panel. I'm going to go to the material graph. And now again, this is a really powerful feature within Keyshot, but this isn't going to be a tutorial for this. I'm just showing you how to set up these materials. Once we're in here, here in the plastic properties, here by diffuse, you want to click on this checkered pattern. Let's load in the base color. And you'll see that it automatically applies it onto our uh, material ball, but you're going to notice this material ball is really glossy right now and doesn't represent what we saw in that image. So to fix this, I'm going to go back to properties. You'll see we actually have a roughness slide over here. Now you can choose to control the shininess manually, uh, which l let me show you how to do that manually without even using my roughness map. So I can adjust that roughness by increasing the value over here and it's going to get rid of um, some of the glo uh, glossiness but this still isn't right because there's a lot of still some shininess on here and that's because of the specular so if I wanted to decrease some of the shine I could also do this manually by clicking over here and selecting a darker gray and that's going to get rid of some of the shine on the material as well and if you want to get rid of the shine even some more uh, obviously you can bring that all the way down to black it's going to get rid of it Right, or you can decrease the refractive index. Alright, so that's how I would do that manually. Now, uh, the materials from the 24 fabric packs from part 1, and I know you just heard me say part 1 because there actually is a part 2 in development with some more experimental materials and some uh, new ones uh, that are being created completely from scratch within Substance Designer. But for this first pack, it's usually just base color, normal, and roughness, so uh, we don't have a specular map. Uh, but the roughness you can see over here, I'm going to click on checkered. I'm going to go ahead loading the roughness. Okay, then I'm going to click on plastic, go to textures, and nearby bump. Click on that tick, select my normal, then select the bump. And just scroll down, make sure normal map is ticked here as well. It should automatically tick that for you. Then you can, of course, control even the bump height. You can apply that bump onto labels. Uh, but that, that's not really relatable to this right now. But yeah, make sure normal map is ticked. And you should be good to go. So if I go back to properties, uh, like I said, if you wanted to, you could even load the roughness map into specular, but you don't really need to do that. Uh, but you can. I mean, you can click on the checker pattern and load that into the roughness. And it is going to make it look a bit more accurate. Uh, but in this case, since there is no specular map for these materials, I'll just go there and I'll decrease this to a darker gray to make it look more accurate. And there we go. That's how I'm setting up these materials in here. Really, really simple. And uh, the lighting is another important thing in my scene. Well, for this image, you can see there's a light source that's coming in from this angle, hitting the sphere. So in Keyshot, I just go to Environment, and I'm using Keyshot 7, so the HDRI, uh, HDRI editor looks a bit different. But there should be a tab over here that takes you HDRI. And I'm just using pins. So actually, if I untick that, oh yeah, so there actually was a pin active on here. So you, your material is probably looking a lot darker than mine. So what I did was I just placed a pin in the scene. Over here, I went pin, add pin. I increased the brightness and the radius a little bit and just positioned it to get something that looks a bit more accurate. But this is the basic node setup for this current 24 fabric materials. And that just shows you that you can use my materials within Keyshot and that you're not just limited to 14 fabric materials. So you'll have a nice uh, large library of materials once I'm finished with part two as well. So whether you're watching this pre-release or post-release, you're going to have access to a lot of these awesome materials that you guys can use in Keyshot. But this is the basic node setup. Really, really simple. And yeah, that's how I do it, guys. And I just want to say uh, thank you so much for your support, guys. You guys are really awesome. You helped me so much. Uh, with the the content and the products that I put put out, I get a lot of really awesome feedback from you guys, and I appreciate that so much. So stay tuned for part two of the fabric pack. Again, there's some really nice ones in there. 
Uh, there is some materials that actually have a specular map as well, but I just showed you that you can control that manually uh, within Keyshot. And the same applies to other 3D programs. If you've got the specular, you literally go in there and you'll make that a darker gray. Or, if, you, like I said, if you want to, you can load the roughness onto specular and that can control it as well. So that's how I'm using my fabric materials within Keyshot. Quick, easy, and they look really awesome as well. Uh, within Keyshot. Alright, so thank you guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for some more tutorials and resources and goodbye.